Jewish times and skepticism. Um, I am actually just a, an armchair historian. I have a minor in history. Uh, so if I say anything that is incorrect and somebody knows that, please let me know. Um, so, spacebar? Yes. Spacebar, yes. All right, so a quick overview of the witch hunts in Europe. Um, before the witch hunts started, it was the position of the Catholic Church that they would not persecute people for witchcraft unless they were doing some sort of direct heresy against the church uh, because they basically didn't believe in it. They thought it was a silly superstition of the masses. However, the closer they moved to the end of the 1400s, um, people started publishing books like the Malachi Kimel of Harm, which is called The Hammer of Witches, uh, which basically outlined uh, what they thought witches were doing and how you could find them and how you could try them. And this eventually led to, in the late 1400s, Pope Innocent saying that the Catholic Church was now going to persecute people for witchcraft. Uh, so between 1500 and 1700, it's estimated that about 40,000 to 100,000 people were killed. Uh, even more were accused or tortured. And it's also considered a serious miscarriage of the budding law system. So, uh, the picture that we often have in our mind of witches are um, the stereotype from, say, Snow White there, of these old women who are kind of on the margins of society. Um, that is true mostly in England. However, outside of that, pretty much anybody could be accused. Women, of course, were more singled out because they are considered to have some sort of inherent sin. Um, and you can see from this picture here uh, by uh, Hans Baldwin Brun, uh, this is actually more a typical picture of witches. Um, however, also men and children were accused. Uh, mostly, uh, they were targets of greedy relatives who wanted to take their property, mm -hmm. or also simply neighbors who had grudges against them for some reason. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, She's just like a witch. There's uh, two sets of accusations. Uh, the first was the pact with the devil, which was considered the direct heresy against the church. It's a renunciation of Christianity. Um, however, the other half of it was the malefica. Um, this was much more important to the masses because this was basically anything that they could not explain that happened to them, their friend, their cows, their crops, whatever. Um, some of the most uh, common were creating storms, droughts, killing animals, crops, people, causing illnesses, etc. Uh, witches were also accused of going to Sabbath, uh, going to orgies, flying, turning into animals, etc., etc. Basically anything off the top of their heads they could not explain at the time. So, when someone was accused of witchcraft, they were often taken to uh, some sort of a local court if they were lucky and not just mobbed and killed outright. Um, they were most likely not given a lawyer. They were often subjected to torture to get a confession, uh, which they would also be required to give more names to, in order to perpetuate witch hunts. Um, usually, witness testimony or their own confession under torture was enough to condemn them. They needed no physical evidence, and most likely their property was confiscated before the trial, um, and that became property by the state or the judge or the relatives. So there was a big reason to really try and keep these trials going because people were benefiting from them. Uh, torture is very common in these witchcraft hunts. Um, the worst torture was actually in Germany. Um, it was typical for a person to be shaved, stripped. The women were often raped by their torturers. Uh, they would start out very light, quote unquote, light. Um, which would include things like uh, the rack, uh, the pear, which would be inserted into an orifice and then expanded. Um, this here is called um, the heated chair. This is metal with spikes on it that would be placed on coals. Uh, and then the person would be placed in the chair. Um, and then finally, the um, final torture in order to gain their confession and usually the other witches, if they were not dead by this point, um, was called the strapado, which is illustrated here. So you'd be hauled up with your hands over your head, uh, sometimes with a weight attached to your feet. Uh, then you would be dropped quickly and then stopped before you hit the floor, which would rip your arms out of your sockets. Um, this is extremely painful, and pretty much nobody can not confess at this point. Um, so luckily, there were some skeptics. Uh, these ranged from basically concerned intellectuals, gentlemen at the time, actual members of the clergy, both Protestant and Catholic after the Reformation. Um, they usually saw some sort of trial firsthand, and of course it was very shocking. And most of their skepticism came out in writing pamphlets or books that were being distributed if they were not destroyed by whatever local body was. Uh, so the first two I'm talking about are Reginald Scott and Thomas uh, Aidy, I guess. I was going to pronounce it Addy, but I've been corrected. Um, and uh, this here is a quote uh, by Reginald Scott, and that is a picture of 
picture from an uh, 80s book, which is A Candle in the Dark. Uh, so I grouped these two together because they are both from England. And um, 80 actually came about 75 years after Scott, but borrowed a lot of his material in his book. Um, so Scott wrote a discovery of witchcraft in 1584. Um, it was the earliest book on witchcraft in English, but most of the copies were burned by James I, who was the king at the time and was a big witch hunt proponent. Um, not only did he argue against witchcraft, but as was mentioned yesterday, um, the book actually went through a lot of how magic was done by tricksters, um, with illustrations and all of that. Um, Eady wrote A Candle in the Dark in 1656, and um, his, uh, his book focused also on this, but in the authority of the Bible. Um, since they were outside of the Catholic realm, um, basically all authority was in the Bible rather than in some sort of body, um, so that was heavily used in their arguments. So the first set of arguments are scriptural. Basically, they state that all things good or evil come from God, which they cite the story of Job. So for them, the real heresy was to say that people or the devil had some sort of powers uh, that the Bible ascribed to God only. Um, they also stated that if ordinary people were running around doing some things like this, then why was Jesus so special? If everybody can make magic things happen, then there's no need to sing out of the side. Um, their other argument was that in the Bible, the type of witchcraft that is described is not the type of witchcraft that people are being persecuted for. Um, so uh, Aidy describes in his book, where is it written in all the Old and New Testaments that a witch is a murderer, or have the power to kill, or to afflict any with disease or infirmity? Um, so they also have skeptical arguments, basically that there's lacking any evidence, um, usually hearsay or um, the logical fallacy of post, er post hoc ergo proper hoc. Um, Scott describes in his book a case where a man had been bullying someone's dog. That man later fell sick and blamed the person who owned the dog for causing his illness, even though there is no link between the two. Um, Scott also believed that many people that confessed to being witches might actually be mentally ill. And also the witch hunters were using tricks. Uh, this is an illustration from his book. Um, so they believe that witches could not feel pain. Uh, so this here is a, a real poker. But then they had these two. This one here is retractable. So if they actually put it against somebody's skin, they wouldn't feel anything. And uh, this one here you can see has a loop, so it would look like it was going through somebody's arm when, in fact, it was not. All right. Uh, the next person. <laughs> I could not find a picture of him. His book had no illustrations in it. So Michael Palin is standing in. He's stepping on the track. Alonso de Salazar Frias, uh, he is actually uh, a member of the Spanish Inquisition which you might think odd, since we all have stories about the Spanish Inquisition running around and killing people left and right. Um, however, he was sent to Navarre, which is in Spain, uh, after the local government started a witch hunt. And he went through and interviewed about 2,000 people, because the Spanish Inquisition was worried about losing their power to these local governments and wanted to know what was actually going on. So after doing this, he basically found that there was absolutely no evidence for this witchcraft that was going on. Accounts often conflicted each other. Um, some people even stated that uh, things were going on in places where he actually had men stationed there and saw nothing. Um, many people admitted that they had only confessed to their torture or actually bribed to name somebody else that they wanted to get rid of in the town. Um, and that the courts had been overzealous and wanted power and money. Um, so he has, his arguments were actually quite successful. Um, the uh, Inquisition uh, led to uh, strict, very, very strict rules against how you could persecute people for witchcraft in Spain. And that effectively ended the witch hunts entirely uh, throughout Spain for the time period. All right, uh, Frederick von Spee, uh, he is a Jesuit priest actually in Germany. Uh, he saw basically the worst horrors of the witch hunts in the area that he lived in. Um, so after a particularly bad uh, set of legal proceedings in the 1620s, he wrote a book called Cato Criminalis in 1631, in which he outlined 51 doubts where he would ask a question and then answer it for himself. Um, this book was actually very well received by the public and helped to end some of the witch hunts in Germany. Uh, however, his uh, Jesuit brothers uh, did not like that and actually had him imprisoned and then moved out of the area. 